If you ask the industry, they say it's all about jobs. 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 Job losses. Job loss. Jobs and employment. Uh, but if you look at what they want to spend the money on, it's not going to create a lot of jobs. Approximately 430,000 jobs. Really, it's about their profits, and they've been fat and happy for so long. They don't want to make even modest adjustments. Hundreds, hundreds of thousands of American workers' jobs are at risk. For the industry to make these exaggerated jobs claims is business as usual. If sequestration occurs, the cuts in the aerospace and defense portion alone could result in the loss of over one million American jobs. Recently, for example, the fight over the F-22 combat aircraft, uh, Lockheed Martin claimed there were 95,000 jobs at stake. In the case of the F-22, we're talking about 95,000 jobs. I looked at it using standard economic models. It was about one-third that amount. The real point is to compare the relative employment impacts of military spending versus spending on uh, domestic infrastructure, on the green economy, on health care, and on education. All of our estimates are based on the data that comes out of the Department of Commerce. Given that military spending creates far fewer jobs than these alternatives. It creates about 30% fewer jobs than just an average consumption basket, about 50% fewer jobs than spending on the green economy. And education creates more than twice as many jobs. Then it's fair to say that every time we take money out of these other alternatives, it is costing the economy jobs uh, by putting money into the military. If we really care about building a, uh, something approximate to a full employment economy, or at the very least, getting us out of the damn recession and creating opportunities for people, you the best place to start is to start cutting the military.